So three levels of struggle I outlined for you at the level of the individual. Then a little bit past that, tangible goals within a community. Tangible goals you struggle for. And then there's the intangible ideas or ideals in a society. Those are three levels of struggle. Now let's paint those three struggles with Islam. Beyond the worldly, and not just in the worldly sense, in the, in the, in the otherworldly sense, Islam also asks us to make a struggle at the level of the individual. I have to fight my nafs, I have to fight shaitan, I have to fight my laziness, I have to fight my anger, I have, you know, this is a struggle with myself. That's a struggle I have to make with myself. I have to struggle to become better in my, in my ibadah. So many du'as we make are about the struggle of ourselves. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allah aid me in remembering you, aid me in thanking you, and aid me in perfecting and beautifying my worship to you. That's a struggle with yourself. Then we go a little bit past that, and let's keep things in the American context, inshallah, even though this has universal value. So you go a little past that and you say, I shouldn't just worry about myself, we need a masjid. We need to have a place where we can worship, where you know people can remember Allah. And so mas masajid got built. And then when masajid got built, then there was a bigger concern. We need to educate our children. Schools got built. Sunday schools got established. Then there were even more concerns. We need to help others get the word of Islam. Da'wah organizations were created. Right? So these were additional struggles. These are additional struggles that stem from first at the individual level, then at the community level. Right? And then even beyond that, there are those who are trying, you know, they have an open-ended target. The open-ended target is one day we want everybody in this country to know what real Islam is. That may not be a tangible goal, it may be very open-ended, but they're ready to struggle for it. And they're not turned, down, turned off by the idea that they're not seeing tangible results. You know, it's enough for them that that is a worthwhile activity. And any of these efforts that we make, you know, for any other human being, they can believe what they believe. We believe every one of these efforts are actually at the end, more than anyone else, benefiting our own selves. They benefit us. They don't necessarily benefit anybody else because we're not capable of that. You know, the Prophet ﷺ benefited humanity more than anybody else. More than anybody else. And yet, Allah commanded him to say, قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا I do not possess the power to benefit you, and I don't possess the power to harm you. I think about that. The Prophet ﷺ is more beneficial to humanity than any other human being that ever lived. And he's commanded to say, I don't possess the power to benefit you. In other words, the benefit that the Prophet ﷺ has given us, that we benefit from him ﷺ, the credit keeps going to him, through him to Allah Azza And that's the attitude of the believer. The attitude of the believer is whatever good I'm doing, I'm not benefiting anybody except myself. That's who I'm benefiting in the end. My, me even giving sadaqah is benefiting myself. Me helping build a masjid, helping out a school, giving a charitable donation, whatever it may be, is helping me. And the benefit that comes to others is not from me, it's from Allah. 